Hello everyone, my name is Ankur Jain and in today's video, I am going to talk about Amazon Cognito. Amazon Cognito is a powerful identity management service. It is also one of my favorite AWS service. In this video, you will learn all the basic as well as advanced concepts of Amazon Cognito that you need to know in order to work with it. So without wasting much time, let's move to our computer screen where I will show you what you are going to learn in today's video. So these are the things that you will learn as part of this video. So these are the 11 items that I have curated for this video. And uh, with these 11 items, you will get a fair understanding of what is Amazon Cognito and in what use cases you can use it. So let's start with the first point. What is Amazon Cognito user pool? So I will just click on this link. By the way, I will provide the link of this page in the description below. So from there you can get on it. So what is Amazon Cognito user pool? So uh, before I explain you what is Amazon Cognito user pool, let's talk about a scenario. So we uh, all of us, you know, use mobile applications or web applications uh, nowadays. So when we use a mobile application or web application, you know, we have to register ourselves. And then once registration is done, we have to log in with our credentials. So that information has to be stored somewhere in databases. And uh, uh, we also get uh, functionalities like forgot password, reset password, identity, You we get a confirmation email on our uh, mailbox or we get an OTP on our mobile to confirm our identity. So all such functionalities are or almost common in every web or mobile application and here Amazon Cognito comes into the picture because these are the things that are almost you know generic and these are generic problem and every mobile application every web application has to solve it so rather than uh, implementing a custom solution every time why don't you use a managed solution which is already built for the same purpose so amazon cognito user pool is nothing just a directory you can think of it as a directory where all my user identities are stored and uh, i don't have to write custom code for that you get functionalities such as login sign up forgot password all these functionalities are by default available by uh, when you use amazon cognito user pool and you can see this diagram here is on the left hand side your web web or mobile app and you are making a request to amazon cognito user pool then cognito user pool also uh, you know will validate your request and will allow you to uh, will provide you id token or access token which we you can use to further make request to your api calls so amazon cognito user pool uh, think of it as a directory where all your users are stored but it's not just a directory it also provide you functionalities to you know if you want to implement login with google login with facebook so you can also implement those kind of identity federation with Amazon Cognito user pool. However, uh, as of now, in theory, this might be seems, you know, mm, complex to uh, visualize how does it work. But uh, in the next step, we will create Amazon Cognito in third step. We'll create a user pool where I will show you how you can create a user pool. And in hosted UI section, you will find that how all these things are working you know in in real world scenarios so uh, uh, amazon cognito user pool it's nothing it's just a directory and a set of common uh, identity management tasks um, that we need in, a, in our day-to-day -day life okay next talk about amazon cognito benefits so what here are some of the benefits of amazon cognito and i really like this service because this is completely serverless i don't have to manage any servers when i use it it is all it is very cost effective because if you create a user pool and even if there are thousands of users, you are not paying any money it is free for first 50000 users so you don't have to worry about cost and even after that it is very cost effective it is highly scalable and secure so by default it is managed by AWS so it is scalable you don't have to worry and it is secure as well so there are a lot of security features it provides and using those features you can secure your applications as well so if you want to go in detail of Amazon Cognitive features you can click on this link I will click uh, I will close previous one 
so here here you see a lot of uh, categories and there are a lot of features so self registration identity store which i said uh, it is a directory of users migration options if you are already having your users somewhere uh, in other databases then you can also migrate those users to amazon cognito if you have a csv file then you can also import the users in amazon cognito uh, multi-tenancy is little bit advanced but it supports that as well you can customize the ui i will show you when we will come to hosted ui you can implement multi-factor authentication you can implement federation when i say federation it means your website will redirect the user to google or facebook or uh, twitter and then uh, user will authenticate themselves there and then will return return back to amazon cognito and then amazon cognito will return uh, redirect use your users back to your application so uh, the the process of this authentication would be very seamless and it is very easy to implement this kind of federation when you are using amazon cognito custom authentication is if you just want to enter your username and passwords and there are multiple authentication flows as well in cognito and uh, so the, these are i'm not going to cover each feature one by one but yeah i mean uh, the possibilities with amazon cognito are endless so uh, i would highly recommend this service uh, to you uh, so that you use this service in your next mobile or web application and uh, I mean, I, I I personally love it, so that that's why I'm saying it again and again. Anyway, so now moving to the third topic, creating a Cognito user pool. So I will head uh, towards my AWS console, and here I will type Cognito, and I will click Cognito. I will close this. Okay, so here you will click here. Uh, on the left panel you you can see user pools you can either click on create user pool or you can go here user pool just click on create user pool okay i will close this and here you see you have to follow a wizard in order to create a user pool so authentication provider so as i said we can use federated identity providers as well but for this initially we are not using but I, let me show you if i click on this you see get a you see a lot of options here like facebook google login with amazon sign in with apple saml oidc so it means what what will happen if i uh, if i do that uh, the a user will be authenticated via google but a user entry will also be created in cognito user pool so okay now uh, just skip this part you know order to avoid confusion we are just going to use simple cognito user pool which is our only directory where we are going to store the users for simplicity just select email for sign in option click next password policy these are the default one should you know the password should contain one number one special character and all, uh, all those things you can also customize this password policy multi-factor authentication as i said you can implement multi-factor authentication at user pool level so i can see i can you know maybe make it required i can make it uh, not required or i can make it optional so i will go with optional uh, so at later point of time if you want to implement mfa on certain users then you can do that okay user account recovery section this is something so is if you forget your password so how will you recover it so if you don't enable this service on the hosted ui that i will show you in the subsequent uh, in a portion of this video so you on that hosted ui you will not see a forgot uh, uh, forgot password option so you have to enable this in order to uh, enable user to recover their passwords so here i have enabled this deliver delivery method for user account recovery messages so here i am selecting email only because we have asked the user to enter their email next okay here if i am selecting optional mfa so which of uh, mfa method should i select sms message authenticator apps so uh, i can select authenticator apps because sms if i select sms then uh, that would require again further configuration of you know because the messages will be sent through sns so that would again require further configuration so okay for for the simplicity just disable the mfa or i can okay keep it keep it just untake this sms message 
because we are not asking user to enter their mobile uh, number uh, we are just asking them to uh, asking them to enter their email so now self sign up service so we'll just enable this so that user can register themselves otherwise user will not be able to register themselves uh, and if we untick it uh, we won't get a register or sign up link on the hosted ui as they have clearly ex mentioned here then uh, attribute verification so how we want the user to be verified so we want to send an email message and verify email address uh, allow cognito to automatically send message to verify and confirm so just leave this default here you can see required attributes so email is uh, coming by default but we will also ask for name so user has to enter their name in order to register themselves uh, and apart from them they have to enter email and password password is not here because that is mandatory you can also add custom attributes okay we'll go next how an email should be sent okay so as i said the email should be verified but how that email should be sent so there are two options either you use send with email with cognito or send email with amazon ses amazon ses is recommended but we are going to select this but uh, because this is simple we don't ha we have not configured amazon ses as of now that's why i am selecting send email with cognito uh, and once we select this we don't have to do anything we we are good but the limitation is uh, in a day you can only send 50 emails so if your registrations on your websites are happening more than 50 per day then you should not use this option but it is good if your site is having uh, is you know few number of user registering registering themselves in a day okay so i will select next i will provide a user pool name demo user pool and i will just enable hosted ui and what should be the domain of the hosted ui so i will select a demo user it is not available i will select one okay that is available so initial app client so we have to create an app client and uh, this is for uh, for example we are creating a mobile application so we have to create one app client for our mobile application if we are creating a web application and des desktop application so we have create separate app clients for different application so we might have different application um, but uh, we want that the user should have a single identity single username and single password that why that's why we have to create multiple app clients within the same user pool so i'm just selecting uh, this public client and um, just providing a name as web app client uh, that i will use for my web application i am not generating client secret as of now i'm providing localhost as a callback url i will show you why i selected localhost uh, this is because once you have uh, logged in on hosted ui then this would be the url where the cognito will re redirect your user then i will just click on next and then i will just review everything and i will click on create user pool so my user pool is created and I think we are done with this step. So we have successfully created Cognito user pool. Hmm. So now we are done with the step three. So now proceed towards step four. So here we will learn what is user, what is groups and how we can create a user in uh, Amazon Cognito. So I will just go back to the user pool and I will select the user pool. So here you see two types user and groups so uh, any uh, any user that you create in this user pool will appear here and we can create a user here from this create user button as well and the groups is something which is for example you are having an uh, admin group then you can create an admin group you you have a finance group then you can create a finance groups and once you create a group you can add users in in that group so uh, the user will be part of that group and you can uh, in your application you can implement the security like if a user is part of admin group then only he or she should be able to access this page so that's the uh, main purpose of creating groups okay so now we will create a user here create user and i will select my name my email id sorry and i will generate i will set a new password so i will let me open a notepad okay i am going to use a b c d at the rate one two three and i will 
provide this password here and I will show you as well okay so this is my email ID and this is my password and I am not marking this email ID as verified I can because I am creating it from here so I am marking this email address as verified and I'm just clicking on create user so the user has been created and you can see the confirm confirmation status is force change passwords and email verified is coming as yes okay so this is how we can create users in cognito user pool from backend so we have created a user okay so now we are almost done with this uh, step four now i will also want to show you one thing which is this signing up and confirming user account so here you see the process so uh, once a user is signed up it is considered as un unconfirmed okay so now because we have created a user from backend which is considered as admin so when we create a user that is automatically confirmed but after confirmed we got a state force password change so we once we log in uh, from this user we will be asked to change the password and once we change the password the state will be changed to the confirmed and only confirmed user will be able to log in into the application so we will see this in uh, demo in next hosted ui section but i just wanted to show you that as of now this user is not confirmed and it has to be confirmed in order to log in into the user pool okay so now we are done with this step four we will move to the hosted ui section so for that i will ask you to search hosted ui cognito on google and you will see this first option setting up and using amazon cognito hosted ui click on this here you will see viewing your sign in page click on this and here you will get a url like this just copy this url paste it in your notepad and just replace few things so here you have to replace your domain so go to your user pool go to the sign in experience uh, okay not here sign up experience sorry in app integration i guess yeah in app integration you will find the domain that you have enabled for hosted ui so oh, go here and replace this domain with your domain now replace this client id so with your client id so here okay i will close this in app client list you will get a client id just replace this client id and redirect uri as i said uh, i have provided it localhost so where it is uh, i cannot see it where it has gone okay it is here so i will just use this value so once this url is prepared if i open this in the same tab this is the hosted ui i was talking about and you see this is hosted on amazon cognito domain so what is a typical process uh, normally when you create a mobile application or web application uh, your application basically when user click on uh, login or registration your application basically redirect the user to this page the user enters his credentials and uh, this cognitive user pool or hosted ui redirect the user back to your application with uh, a code in query string parameter and then your application's responsibility to get the uh, username and uh, user email and other information uh, from that code by you know making a request to the cognito user pool api so that's uh, that's the process and this is the hosted ui that that is provided to you by cognito and you don't have to create it manually and here you find all the functionalities such as uh, sign in sign up and if you forget a password then you also uh, get forgot password functionality so all these things are already um, available for you so what i'm going to do i will log in with the user that i created in previous step and okay here and this is my user this is my email id and i will use the same password here and okay 
so you see i have been asked to change password because here force change password status was uh, in the confirmation status field or column so i will update my password so i will make it a b c d e okay sorry only this new password enter new password and i will also provide my name and question so i will just click on send okay so now just forget the, uh, i mean just don't mind uh, but notice this here this is the url where the user has been redirected and in query string we got code and with this code your application will face this code from query string and will uh, make further call to the uh, cognito user pool api to get the user information and that that way it you can you know implement login into your application so it it is working fine and uh, now if i go and refresh this so you will see the uh, status will change so the status has been confirmed so the next time if i enter my username and password i will not be asked to uh, change my password again so this is how cognito hosted ui works and uh, um, yeah and okay one more thing one more thing we i can show you here so i again open this cognito hosted ui so you will see i i have been automatically redirected back to the local host because uh, that domain includes my cookies and that's why i have not been asked to login again so i will just open this domain and i will clear the cookies so now i will just open it again to show you how i can create how can i sign up from here so here i will just use my email id but i will just add plus one and i will provide ankush chain plus one and i will provide again a b c d at one two three sign up so you see i this time i have been sent a verification code and uh, i have to verify my identity so i will open my gmail account in a separate window because earlier we had verified our identity and we had created the user from a cognito user pool so if an admin is creating the user this verification is not sent but if you are uh, if a user is creating it uh, registering himself from the ui or from hosted ui then this verification code will be sent so you can see uh, i have received this uh, email and your confirmation code is this so i will just close this i will provide the confirmation code and i uh, okay i have been logged in and i have been redirected back to my application and here i will see two users and that user is also confirmed so that's how we we can see that you know uh, we can leverage hosted ui to register a new user or and sign in existing user okay so now moving to the sixth part which is mf integration as i said mf integration can be done so we had uh, enabled optional uh, optional MFA at uh, user pool level so if I just select this and I click on this update MFA configuration so I can make MFA active for this particular user and if I select authenticator app only and I save changes then I, this will be uh, basically okay uh, okay this will be saved but I am getting error invalid parameter exception error were encountered during MFA update okay anyway i won't go in much detail but yeah i just wanted to show you how this can be done if you are using storing the user user's phone number then you can also enable mfa with sms as well but you will be charged for the sms that has been sent by aws to your registered user mobile number anyway now moving to the web identity federation which is very important to understand and that also uh, you know shows you the power of cognito what you know what are the different things that you can do with cognito so amazon yeah this is the web identity federation and token management so what is web identity federation and uh, though might be you don't know what is identity federation but i am sure that you have used it many times so what it is so whenever you go to a website such as github or facebook or, or any other website so so those website they provide you an option login with google login with github login with twitter so uh, 
you will be clicking on that link that site will be taking you to that page on google sign in page you will be providing your in, uh, uh, credentials information there and that site will be redirecting you back to your mobile app so you are not creating you are not basically uh, creating your new email and password credential instead you are reusing your existing credential which are stored in uh, which you have you know already created your account when uh, you created your account with google and facebook so this process is known as web identity federation you are federating your identity to an external provider and these are federating idp idp means identity provider so this is web identity federation and you can implement it in user pool as well so if i just click on leave and i click on sign up experience so here you see not sign up sorry sign in experience so here you see federated identity provider sign in so if you see add identity provider if you select google then here you get a uh, box google here you have to implement google client id client secret and authorized scopes and uh, the you have to map the scopes you know the scopes returned by google uh, to the cognito user pool attributes so and then you will add an identity provider once you do that your hosted ui will start showing google uh, button there so if i just search on google hosted ui uh, cognito with uh, identity federation identity federation so you will see in the images i will show you how does it look like so yeah this is how it looks like so on the left hand side uh, this is how our ex uh, earlier hosted ui and this uh, these kind of button you will start seeing on our hosted ui page so this is very easy to implement this and how does it work you will click on this google button it will take you to that page that will because you are right now on hosted ui cognito domain so from cognito domain you will be redirected to the google google will redirect you back to the cognito and cognito will redirect you back to your local host or whatever the callback url that you have specified so it is that kind of process uh, but it it is so seamless that it feels like you uh, you know these redirects are not happening in background but they happens uh, under the hood so this is what i have explained here okay let me talk about token management as well so what is token management so that is another use case of cognito as i said the possibilities are endless with cognito so you have registered your your user uh, with username and password you can in you you can use hosted ui you can use web identity federation you can implement mfa now what if you have created apis and you want to secure those api with the jwt kind of stuff uh, so token management is again the thing that is provided by cognito and uh, it it provides you id token access token and you can use those tokens uh, in your api to validate whether this user is uh, authenticated or not or authorized to access particular resource or not so those kind of things uh, you know all, all the apis are available in cognito user pool the only thing is left is you have to consume those apis in order to get id tokens and access token now uh, talking about the sdk support so uh, this is the hosted ui okay which you used so everything is uh, uh, well prepared or pre-prepared for you but now what if you need to manually implement this login you have to uh, write the functionality if someone clicks on this sign in button you have to write the code to validate the user so for that aws provides sdks and you can see on this page these are the languages inside uh, i mean for which your amazon cognito sdks are available c plus plus go java javascript kotlin dot net php and a lot of so almost in every language you have the sdk so you can also leverage cognito apis to manually implement these solutions if you want to okay so if you want if you're creating an application in react angular view flutter so you have to implement a similar hosted ui but uh, that you know um, 
that you don't want it to redirect to as external cognito uh, cognito domain you just want to keep everything in your mobile app or front end app so amplify provides ui components so you will click on this link and you will go to this website and here you see get started building so you see couple of ui frameworks here and you select angular and you see there is component authenticator so you see you can just write this line of code step five you sorry yeah you just have to write this much of code and that kind of component will be created for you this kind of sign in create and and this is embedded within your uh, within your angular application it is not you don't need a hosted ui to create this and all the functionalities that were provided to hosted ui all all those functionalities are available here and and under the hood it is also leveraging the javascript sdk to make uh, make request to cognito so this is uh, uh, what we just covered now coming to the identity pool so i i uh, this session might be overwhelming to you but uh, this is the last thing that i wanted to cover and identity pool so identity pool is something a different concept and uh, Till now, we just talked about Cognito user pool, where we just talked about how we can store users, how we can uh, create users. Uh, but we were not talking about how to access AWS's, AWS services with the users which we have created in Cognito user pool. So what if you want to access AWS services such as S3, DynamoDB, or GraphQL APIs, AppSync APIs, or any other AWS service, how would you do that? So AWS uh, came up with an identity pool service which enables you to access these AWS services with the users which you already have created in Amazon Cognito user pool. So what happens, here's a diagram your user come on this application mobile app or web app they just go to the third party identity provider if you have configured they get an id token they send this id token to amazon cognito amazon cognito returns another token now this amazon cognito returns you know this id token the third step id token is provided by the ID, these identity providers. Now, Cognito provides a Cognito ID token here in the step four. Now, we send that ID token to STS service, Amazon STS service security token. That security token service will convert that token into temporary AWS credentials, access key, secret, uh, access ID, and access secret. And we will use those temporary credentials to access AWS services, similar to what we do in server-side applications. We, when we create an IAM user, we get access key and secret, uh, access secret. So similar to that, but, but when we create these credentials in IAM, they are permanent. But in that case, we get temporary credentials, which are stored, uh, which are valid for um, maybe one hour, 20 minutes, I, I think, that is configurable but we get temporary credentials now we can do anything that we want to do with those temporary credentials uh, to access aws services so however this is little advanced topic but i just wanted to cover that as since we are uh, this video is dedicated to uh, amazon cognito so yeah this is how you can use identity pool as well so thank you very much for watching i hope that this video would be quite beneficial to you and now you have a fair understanding of what you can do with amazon cognito and you know how extensible this uh, service is so thank you very much for watching okay please do like and subscribe my channel if you really like this video thank you very much